Hello everyone and welcome to my stamina Nightblade PvP build for the Elder Scrolls Online Refstone patch. So this build is very high in sustain and weapon damage and it is very suitable for both Cyrodiil CP PvP, Cyrodiil non-CP PvP and Battlegrounds. In all these situations the Nightblade performs really well and it has some really nice bursts and some very nice sustain. The sustain really helps because you can keep the pressure up and you can quickly get yourself back into the fight. The build is also very easy adjustable. What I mean with that is that I myself for example run all weapon damage glyphs. But if you want you can go for like some increased magicka recovery. If you want to use your cloak a little bit more. You can go with. You can even go with like an infused weapon damage enchantment. If you want to have even more damage. You will be a bit more squishy then. But you know it's really easy to optimize and change this build a little bit around. So what is very nice about this build is that you can just follow it as a guideline and then from there on edit it a little bit to your own preferences. The build can also take a punch. What I mean with that is it's not of course not a tank by any means but it has some very high DPS sustain and it also doesn't get nuked down instantly. It's not a glass cannon build and that's because we use some protective traits on our build as well. But I'm not going too much into detail about the build yet. Let's show you guys some gameplay of how this build performs and after that we will show you what gear we use, what race I recommend, the champion point distribution and everything else you need to know about this build. Enjoy! So for the gear setup, skills and everything else, you can easily find a summary on www.learneso.net and then build Stamina Nightblade, or well Nightblade, then Stamina Nightblade. I will link the direct link to this as well in the description. But here you go, gear setup is 2 slain, 5 eternal hunt and 5 bone pirates. You want to wear impenetrable traits on all the armor pieces, tricell enchantments on the big pieces and maximum stamina on the smaller pieces. You want to go for it 5 medium, 1 light, 1 heavy, or 6 medium and 1 heavy. Especially if you have to endorse the passive, it is kind of nice to go with this. 
I personally would go for 6 medium 1 heavy. That's the setup I would be running. Jewelry enchantments. I currently run 3 weapon damage enchantments. Um, especially in, even in non-CP, I still have plenty of sustain. I'm a wood elf bossmer, so my stamina recovery is very high. If you are not a wood elf or a race that has stamina recovery, go at least with 1 stamina recovery. If you feel lacking sustain, go with 2 stamina recovery. I really like to run this high DPS setup. I also have 3 protective traits because it increases our physical and spell resistance by over 5000 and it really makes you a lot less squishy. Bow enchantment, oblivion damage, trait sharpened, 200 weapons, 64 in stamina, drink dubious camera throne, Mundus the warrior. You can also go for the atronic if you want more magic recovery as you can also go for the increased critical damage if you want it as well. I mean you can play around with it a little bit. Recommend a race number one without a doubt Wood Elf, number two Khajiit, number three Red Card. I mean all these three races are actually very close to each other. They are all very efficient with this build and sell up for an eye blade. So it's not like Wood Elf kicks some Red Card out of the water, you know. It's just slightly different playstyle. Here you have the skill setup, reverse slice, the fourth ability of the two and a bar, surprise attack, ambush, mass hysteria, and rally. And the ultimate is incap. And on the bow bar we have magnum, resolving figure, that's our healing, poison injection, very nice over time damage effect, shadow image, and shadowy disguise. Shadow image is very important, you know, to pot back to get out of the co pressure or combat. Shadow the disguise to get it to sneak. Ultimate. I myself run the werewolf ultimate because it just gives me so much more stamina recovery on my back bar. But you can also go for a bill ultimate ballista. I myself pick ballista because you can place it down and then you can actually get into the, the fight yourself. So you can just like fear your opponent then and keep the pressure up while ballista is hitting as well. Which will be a lot of pressure. Here's a little bit of rotation summary. So the rotation with this build, let's get started with. Before engaging, you always want to keep your rally up, of course, for the increased weapon damage and overtime healing. But what I also like to do is to place your shadow image. And what I always like to do with the shadow image, placed on like a platform, like above or below or behind something, so you have some line of sighting. Because in case you get pressured a lot while in a fight, you know, or there are enemy players who jump onto you and you are facing yourself in a four versus one. You can quickly roll dodge, teleport back to your shade and use your cloak to disappear. Well, as if you just use your cloak while being in a 1 vs 4, they could quickly use an AoE to draw you back out of cloak. So it's always really nice to play your image at a distance that you can port back to it easily, but that you have some line of sighting. Worst case scenario, just place it in the open, at least you can draw some distance between you and the enemy. So. If you want to open the attack, it's very simple. What you want to do is a light attack along with the poison injection. So maybe like a heavy attack and then fire both. You're gonna gap close with an ambush, then light attack, surprise attack. And at the same time you keep weaving. And when Selene procs, I always like to, when Selene procs, I either like to fear with mass hysteria or I like to use my in cap. Either of the two will really work. And the reason why I overall wait for the Selene to proc is because if I do it at this moment, most people will actually dodge, will dodge the Selene or try to block it. But if you wait for like the proc and then you fear, there's a much higher chance that your Selene will actually hit. If you get pressured a lot, we are using Eternal Hunt. So let's say this is a Stamina Sorg or any other gap closer opponent. What you can very nicely do is you can use a light attack along with magnum shots and then you quickly roll dodge and this is a really good tactic because by doing this you not only create a lot of distance between you and your opponent because the opponent gets shot back and you get shot back as well creating a big gap if you also do the roll dodge and he does gap close the eternal hunt rune is there and it will damage him and snare him as well so this is a great way really to create some distance between you which allows you to use figure real quick recast your rally or even go into Shadowy Disguise, aka Cloak, and get away from your opponent so you have some time to recover. And after that, of course, you can get ready again and engage your enemy again and pressure him. 
Apart from that, just keep the poison injection up on your opponent. Use weaves along with surprise attack. So surprise attack, light attack, surprise attack, light attack. Recast the poison injection. Recast your rally if needed to. And use your mass hysteria or incap. And then the champion points. 43 in Siphoner. 20 Warlord. 9 Sprinter. 75 Mooncalf. 23 Arcanist. 90 Tenacity. 81 in Tumbling. Apprentice. 75 Blessed more healing atronic 28 shattering blows 40 master at arms 21 physical weapon experts the ritual 18 precise strikes 13 tomaturge 11 piercing 64 mighty and the steed 22 medium armor focus 31 spell shoot 22 resistance 13 ironclad the lady 18 fixed skinned 43 elemental defender and 56 hardy the Lord, 56 reco quick recovery and 9 expert defender. And I don't know why this says this build was brought to you by Rumor. Watch this Lobo Life at my Twitch link. But I, I made this build. Okay, don't. Uh, <laughs> but this Lobo also has some really good PvP builds. We got a great Dragonite PvP build from this Lobo on here. We have a lot of Templar builds as well. We got guides regarding beginner guides, champion points, race, PvP. Ritz, everything. We are, we are adding a lot of content every day to learn ESO. Anyways, that was pretty much it. I know it was a shorter video, but that is because the overview here is so much simpler and makes it much easier to cover a build right from the bat. So, again, I will link the link in the description if you want to check it out or any other build slash guides. I wish everyone a great day and see you in Tamriel. I'm out. Bye-bye.